we all love all our books, but there are some books that we love more than others, uh, and this is one of them. Uh, and I have very, very good reasons to do so. I mean, and it's not just me. I think everybody who's read this book, everyone in my company, uh, we love it passionately. Nasir's done a few things here that you rarely see in an Indian memoir. The first is be honest. Uh, we come from a culture of politeness. We gloss over difficult things, uh, uncertain relationships. Uh, and in this book, Nasir has laid it bare, laid it bare like no one else. And the second thing he's done is that he said it in a voice that's wholly his. It's electric, it's original, it has a musical quality. Uh, there's no ghostwriter here. There aren't perfect manicured sentences. When you read this book, you know that Nasruddin Shah is talking to you. And it's rare to have a book where you see someone's personality, even his heart and mind distilled in the words. And in this book you do. This is what makes it so extraordinary. I've never read a memoir by an Indian this good. This is why I feel so passionately about it. And it's why all the reviews have been as ecstatic as it has. It's hit the bestseller list, uh, and it's got as many fans as his film going has. And I'm going to invite now Nasir Din Shah and uh, Pradeep Krishan to come on stage. Nasir will be speaking with Pradeep, who also needs no introduction in Delhi. He's a well-known filmmaker and environmentalist, Trees of Delhi. His book is a classic and a bestseller in its own right. Nasir, Pradeep, do come on stage. Before the conversation starts, can I ask that you check your cell phones are on silent? This is going to be a wonderful event. We want no disturbances. Thank you. You, you know, Nasir, people have been saying that this book is so... Um, bold and so uh, frank and you haven't spared anybody. Um, it's honest, brutally honest perhaps is words that people have used. But, you know, I'm not surprised by that. That's, that's you. That's the you that I know, um, you know, so often in conversation. You know, you, you, that's the, just the way you are. What does surprise me uh, is the quality of your writing. I mean, I'm absolutely... I've been sucked in the middle of my forehead about how good the writing is. You want to talk to us a little bit about the process of writing it? Um, did it flow easily? Did you sweat blood? Was there lots of revision? How long did it take? That, that sort of thing. It took 12 years. Not because I was sweating blood, but because I was lazy. <laughs> I started it as I have written it before words because I was bored to death in Prague shooting a film which, uh, when I saw, also bored me to death. <laughs> and I had nothing to do, so I bought myself a laptop and started typing. Somebody taught me how to operate it, so I wondered what I should do with it. And he explained there are many things you So I said, no, just tell me how I can type. So he taught me how to type, and I started typing, and wrote about 25 pages in that time, uh, and then abandoned it, took it up again after a year, found it interesting to read and went on. And that's why it took 12 years. Um, I, I wasn't, you know, being a perfectionist and all that sort of thing. I was just taking my time over it. I wasn't at all sure it would ever get completed uh, or that anyone would ever read it. I was doing it for my own pleasure. It was giving me great joy to relive moments of childhood, which I hadn't thought of for years, maybe 15 years. I found great, uh, great joy in recalling those things and checking with my brothers whether this actually happened or did I make it up. <laughs> and they confirmed that yes, it actually did happen. Most of the, uh, all the things that I've written about. And uh, it wasn't difficult. I've been asked by journalists whether it was difficult to be so frank. No, really, because I, I, I was trying to recall it with as much clarity as I could. And I wanted to put it down with as much clarity as I could. And I thought that if I am not to do that, then what's the point of writing it? How did you decide where to stop writing? Why did you, why did you choose to stop it when you were 32? Because that's exactly half my life. In fact, I was tempted to call the book Half a Life. But I believe there's already a book existing by that name. And also because if I'd covered 
my life up to now, it would have turned up into an 800 page tome, which I didn't want. Uh, and also because after my marriage to Ratna, it was more or less smooth sailing. The traumas, the struggles, the, the aspirations, the, all that was behind me. And I thought that was the, the interesting part, which, which people might be keen to know about. Uh, and that's why I finished it. And also because I thought it was a neat ending point. I wouldn't have found another neat ending point. Uh,